My brilliant moment was when I was sitting in a course through Landmark Education and the brief was to do a community project. And I thought about all the women over the past few years who have asked me to make them a hat because they're going through chemotherapy. And I thought, actually, why don't I do a workshop for these women who are undergoing hair loss to come and make their own hat and to have it in an environment which is fun and creative and empowering. And that's when I came up with Hat Over Heels. My name is Sahar MacArthur. I'm a milliner. I have two labels, Sahar Millinery and Ugly Lovely. And I also run workshops for women who are undergoing hair loss to come and make their own hat. And these are called Hat Over Heels. So for me, my stand in the world is clear. I want to have everybody in the world be connected to their own beauty. So that's what drives me, my stand in the world, and I'm not gonna stop until I do it or I die. So what's challenging? So for example, when it came to doing Hat Over Heels, I suddenly had to design and make hats for women with no hair. The challenging thing was, I don't know what that's like. So from a practical aspect, what does it feel like to wear a hat when you don't have any hair? You know, does the hats, do the hats have to be padded? Do they have to be warm? You know, what, what, what do they need to be like? So from a practical aspect, that, those were the kind of questions I had to, I had to find out. But also, um, just in the way of being sensitive um, to, to these women who are coming to my workshop, um, I don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. I don't know what it's like to, uh, to, to, you know, to go through chemotherapy or alopecia. So I think it's that, that kind of sensitivity um, that, that was, you know, just to be aware of that, but not sort of overdo it and how to kind of, how to tread that basically. A lady called Lynn, she came into the workshop and she was beautiful. She had what looked like a, a full head of hair. Um, and it turned out it was a wig, and, and she was fine for the first few minutes. Um, but then when it came to the part where the women had to try on the, the sample hats to see what style they, they wanted to, to make, she suddenly got really hesitant, and, and I could feel her just sort of, you know, going sort of small, and, and she said, you know, I, I'm never without my wig. She said, I, I, I came here because I want to be able to wear a hat without my wig. But now it comes to it, no one ever sees me without my wig. My husband doesn't. You know, I do the hoovering in my wig. And and she just felt really, really uncomfortable being in, in a large space with all these people that she didn't know. So there was a few awkward moments where, where she was taking off her wig and, and trying these hats on. But then quite quickly, after a few minutes and then throughout the course of the day, she, she started just getting really comfortable and really relaxed and I was just really having fun with, with what she was doing and with you know, getting creative and, and things like that. And I would just see her like walking across the room, you know, like with, with no wig, no hat, just completely just herself and, and natural and, you know, just, just actually looking confident and, and beautiful. And, and, and that was just really, really a, a lovely, amazing moment for me. And, and actually the most amazing moment came when two weeks later, I, I was watching the, the video of the footage um, that we'd shot on that day. And, uh, and it came to her bit and, and I recognized her voice, um, but the, the camera angle was just her, her hands, um, you know, they were just holding her hat you know, which I thought was understandable. And, and as the camera sort of like, you know, the angle came up and it came to her face, then there she was, without her hat, without her wig, just completely confident and comfortable with no hair in front of the camera. And that to me was amazing because this could be potentially seen by millions of people and that was how she felt on that day that was how comfortable she felt so for me that was probably one of the most beautiful moments um, of my career where i'd like to go next with hat over heels is to turn it into a, a social enterprise to get more funding to do it again to take it worldwide and 
You know, and both this and with my label Ugly Lovely are really all about finding beauty in the unconventional. So, you know, this goal which I have, which is really to, to just spread the beautification, you know, everywhere. So for every single person to be in touch with their own beauty, to really have that realised. Um, and of course, my specialist way of doing that is through hats. So my brilliant moment was um, happened uh, 15 years ago uh, when I first arrived in London and um, I had studied acting and theatre and I was really keen to see uh, my first West End show and uh, the first theatre I came across happened to be the Theatre Royal Haymarket and I walked in and I booked a ticket and while I was there I discovered this pamphlet, this little leaflet. Uh, for this program called Masterclass that was there that offered free masterclasses with uh, leaders of the industry and um, I thought why not I'll come along to a couple of them and that was my introduction that was sort of my perfect moment because now I run that program and 15 years later I'm a big part of influencing the next generation of young theatre makers. I'm Blaine George and I'm the Programme Director for the Theatre Royal Haymarket Masterclass Trust. And we are an education programme based at the Theatre Royal Haymarket that opens up that, that space and that theatre for the benefit of young people and engages them in theatre in various different ways. I think it's about uh, introducing young people to, to theatre and um, we do a lot with emerging talent and it's about watching them grow as artists and as theatre makers and uh, seeing them come in at one point uh, in their career and then catching up with them later on and seeing how they've grown and changed and that's pretty impressive. We engage uh, thousands of young people every year and so it's hard to keep track of all of them but we run an apprentice scheme and that's a, a pretty moving part of our program where young people come in who have possibly studied in the theatre, maybe they haven't studied in the theatre and uh, we give them hands-on training uh, on our shows at the Haymarket. It's a paid opportunity, so it means that they don't have to worry about bills while they're learning, but it is a step on the ladder and it's a step on their career and lots of them have gone on to do wonderful things. They're directing their own shows in the West End, they're running theatre companies around the country, you know. They are the new faces of, of theatre, they're, the, they're the, the people who are making it happen. We run a, a scheme called Pitch Your Play and it encourages emerging writers, directors and producers to team up and produce that writer's play. Um, we offer them the Theatre Royal Haymarket stage for a week so they can rehearse it and they present it as a staged reading. But just recently one of um, the playwrights got a publishing contract with uh, quite a well-known um, uh, publisher and they, they published that play for her. And it's, it's lovely to see the path that um, that we can sort of open up for, for young people. And so she came in with a play that might have stayed in a drawer, but we saw something in it and um, it's published and will be licensed and other people around the country and possibly around the world will be able to do it. And uh, we, were, we were a small part of that, but that, that's quite lovely. The organization has been around for almost 20 years now. And I think it's building on the successes. I think every year we get you know, a, a bit better at what we do. Uh, the program branches out in different ways. And uh, I think it's, it's just a continuation of, of, of that good stuff. I mean, I think what we want to do is just be building on the legacies that we've already created and uh, keep going. You know, there are cuts to the arts happening all the time. I think people get, young people get less exposure to the arts across all sectors, whether that's dance, uh, visual art, theater, maybe less so music, but I think it's getting harder and harder for young people to find great opportunities to engage. Um, or even just if they're curious to test the waters a little bit and here's it here what we do is just open up the theater we offer them free opportunity and say come and engage